What time is the reservation for? 7.30. I'll pick you up at 7. Great. Plastic surgery? Podiatry. Oh, yeah, right. Feet, what the world needs most. Oh, it's not today, Charlie. I'm on your duty. In that dress? These chicks from Orient Street be there. I'm out. For a little of yours? No. No? Oh, man. Come on. I said no. Come on, man. so it wasn't much conversation. The ass name is Lopez. We gotta go back and write it up. Yeah, I guess I might as well take my handcuffs and my belt. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, right. What happens when this shot wears off? God. I hate to put him in restraint. Yeah, but if he comes up swinging... Wait, is he under arrest? Arrest? Oh, I guess we could have, but uh, with the family disputing, his, his aunt says he's a good kid, and he's just one sick in the head, so... The aunt won't press charges, so uh, here we are. All right, uh, turn him over. Turn him up. There. there. Now. Just until we see how you are. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's all yours. Hey, man, let's get it going. Tried to hide it, but I could He's making trouble again. It's that damn college song telling not to do that. Is that true, Mr. Ford? Well, he didn't have to listen. Uh, well, what is it they kept you up? Well, a bit nervous about getting out. He's lying. He was worried about foreign policy. Uh, what? No! You were when you weren't whistling, you were muttering that, that damn speech to him. Like Poor's had a setback. Shall I up his medication again? Back to 30 milligrams? Nothing wrong with that. Just means that's the level he needs. You can still send him out, Friday. What? Why not? He's not dangerous. No? What if he goes back to New York again and tries to address the UN? They'll lock him up and send him back to us. Buff him up and turf him out. You know a better way? We'll up his medication even higher. Till we find the right level? Oh, yes. 
He's waiting for you in Isa room. Why me? Why couldn't he have given him the parley? Parley's on overload as is. Just take Sergeant Benny with you and keep your distance. Mr. Zamora, I'm Dr. Davina. Ready, Doctor? How are you feeling? Not bad. I like the color, but it fits a little tight. Can you tell me how you got here? On the bus? <laughs> the police brought you here on the bus. Can you tell me what happened? Nothing. Do you remember anything? Yeah. You put me in this thing. You were violent. How are you feeling now? Calm. Nice and calm. I'm nice and quiet now. Can you get me out of this thing? What happened to your cousin? Look, you want to talk, get me out of this and we'll talk. You're not angry. You're in control of yourself. Yes, teacher. lover. Well, the doctor understands that, but the person is grossed out. <laughs> You're too pretty to be a doctor. I haven't heard that since med school. Yeah, I'm the one who's too pretty to be a doctor. Now, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> one more year, baby. We are out of here. California. Here we come. Nice, healthy neurotics. With ingrown toenails. And treatable problems. We'll play tennis. Some gorgeous. Sunday babies. Could both be named after me. Stephen and Stephanie, of course. And dog. Big black Labrador retriever. And he'll be named after me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so backed up, it's silly. Anyhow, here's what I got from the family. Frederick Zamora. One for the Rico, over to five kids. Mother ill, so he sent to live up here with an aunt because he'd have a better chance. Now, get this. Straight A student through grade school, first year of high school. Honor Society, won an art award, everything. Then, three years ago, his mother died. Went into a tailspin, started getting withdrawn, dropped out of school. Then this incident. So whatever else your macho man is, he no dummy. Yeah. Bird. Uh, stone. Drugs. Alligator. It's stone. Book. You're from Connecticut, right? Your father's a big insurance guy down there. Maybe I'll meet him sometime. Father. <laughs> and your boyfriend, uh, Dr. Stephen Nelson. He works over at St. Teresa's Hospital. Is he from Connecticut, too? I scare you, don't I? Oh, wow. How does he find out all these things? 
Why would you want to scare me? If I can't love you, I gotta do something. Cardiology, fine. Nothing from blood chemistry. Thank you. Well? Well, no hallucinations. He's not delusional. His reality testing is good, even to the point of making veiled little threats. Medical insurance? None, which makes him another Medicaid patient, which elicited yet another note from the review committee. I know, I know. We're over-admitted on Medicaid patients. In which they request we ship him across town to Rexford Lutheran, but Rexford Lutheran's no fool. The boy is violent, and they don't want him. Thanks for calling. Well, maybe we want him. Poor and violent. Sounds like our cup of tea, huh, Lisa? Where are you with him? Oh. He put a guy in the hospital. I still don't know why. For all I know, he had a temporal lobe seizure. EEG's pending. I want to fully evaluate him. Do it. What about the review committee? I'll deal with him. Anything else? Yes. Those hospital beds you added out in the hall. Those patients are getting up at night and walking around. Night staff can't follow them. Oh, brother. Well... Increase their meds, so they sleep through. Oh, here you are, brother. Let me go, man. Come on, come on. I said no. Just a little fun. Hey, you, you, you and I, we can... You want to go to the bathroom? You want to go to the bathroom? Hey, let him go. Let him go. Take it easy. Calm down. Trust me. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. 
funny and scary. Then all of a sudden, he's just a, a kid. Yeah? Is that all? Yeah? Why do you ask? Well, he seems to get to you a lot more than the other patients, that's all. I don't know. They all get to me. All right. All right, he's just another patient. My mother was a saint. My old man, he was a joke. He had this cow. She was all he cared about. When she had a baby, a calf, and the calf caught a cold, he'd put it in my bed. I'd sleep on the floor, stay up all night with that calf, and I caught a cold on the floor. But your mother was a saint. She was always sick, but she always looked after me. Who was it that decided to send you up to the States? father was with his cow. She got too sick to look after the others and me. There were better schools up here, so I came. How did you feel about it? Fine. And Sonia? Fine. Cousin Ronnie? Fine. That's why you sent him to the hospital, because everything was fine. And look, I don't care about Ronnie, okay? He's not Sonia's favorite, but I'm used to that. What about you? How does she treat you? I didn't see it coming. 
I mean, I, I knew he was angry with his family, but I never thought... You know, it was that, that moment at the end, when his aunt took me aside. I never should have let her do that. I mean, he read it that I was with her and planning to dump him, so he went off and brooded about it, and on our next session... Well, as we say in France, a rookie mistake. Luckily, no one was hurt. Question now is, what do we do with Mr. Zamora? Why, well, I'd say the evaluation is complete. He's violent and dangerous. Look, for all we know, that was an isolated episode. We could watch him for a bit, then send him out on a pass, see how he does. Hook him up with a halfway house if his folks don't want him. Make a referral to the outpatient clinic. Now, Dr. Parley, let's don't send people out of here so fast. He did physically assault someone. He almost got Lisa. Now, we've got him for another 30 days on the involuntary commitment. Is that right, Charlie? If he doesn't contest it. Uh-huh. Well, excuse me, Dr. Butler, but if we've got Mr. Zamora here and he's not violent for the 30 days that we've got him, then we send him out, right? Yes, if all you can do is go buy the book. Well, excuse me, doctor. Isn't that why the book was written? I mean, isn't that our job? And if it is, it strikes me that what we need to do is try to get 30 non-violent days out of Mr. Zamora. Dr. Parley, it strikes me that you wrote the book. Okay. If you go that way, standard medication is 10 milligrams holoperidol twice a day. Or if you want to make sure, 15. Excuse me, but I said that he was a danger to himself and others. And we said not if he's medicated. What if he stops taking his medication once he's out? Why should he? Well, because he's 18 years old, full of piss and vinegar, and does not want to spend his day zombie-eyed. And most importantly, doesn't think, except in moments of extreme anguish, that there's anything wrong with him. Now, Lisa, what is it that you want? Now, do you want to send him upstate, custodial care at the warehouse by the waters? He'll rot there. Do you want to put him on a bus to Phoenix, let them worry about him out there? He'll get much less supervision than here. What? Look, he's dangerous. Don't let him out. Keep him. I'm trying to, but there are problems. Now, look, I share your concern, but there's only so much we can do. I just can't issue orders. There's a hospital full of patients here. There's a system that runs the they hospital. They just got here with a Medicaid cut. Claire, please. <laughs> there's only so much we can do, or you. And we've got him for 30 days, yeah? Let's see what happens. Yeah. But as to medication, five milligrams twice a day. I don't want him zonked. Five milligrams, as you say. All right. We got work to do. Let's go. Come on. Work, work. What can you do? I don't know, but I don't feel good. Well, of course you don't. You've been through one hell of a scary event. You've got all kinds of emotions churning around inside of you. It's the time for you to lay out, let them all sift down. Maybe, I don't know. Lisa, you did your job. You evaluated him the hard way. Well, he's still my patient. To do what with? I don't know. Nothing. Let it go. In a month, he's gone. No, he's not gone. He's out here with you and me and all that anger lurking deep down. Lisa, are all situations solvable? No. Are you responsible for all situations? No. Look, I know this is going to sound cruel, but sometimes the best thing you can do in these situations is just walk away. If you don't, they'll chew you up, they'll spit you out, and they won't give a damn you were ever there. My folks is an example. Forty years in the Chicago school system because they believed. And how did they end up? Broken and ignored. Not for you, hon. Not for me. Cool him, huh? Yeah.
you make it through the next four weeks without anything happening? Home free. Doctor? Uh, Lisa. I'm sorry about... Well, I was partly to blame. I would never want to hurt you. I know. Get your pill. I'll see you later. Doctor. Hey, the doctor, where you been? I ain't seen you around the last couple days. I was on emergency room duty. How are you? Me? Top of the line. Wait three days to go, then boom, I'm gone. I know. Hey, Mr. Kelly, uh, where are you taking my doctor to? <clears throat> hey, Mr. Kelly, how about a little top 40 radio, huh? Freddie. We do this all the time. I play DJ on his teeth radio. He has no radio in his teeth. But he thinks he does, so why not make it a nice radio, right, Mr. K? Freddy. Sing. See? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's all right. Okay, Mr. K, what's it gonna be? Andy Williams? Who? Christmas? Christmas? Silent. Oh, silent. Silent night, right? All right. I'm gonna have to fake it a little, okay? All right, here we go. Silent night. Holy night, all is purple, all is white. Now, Mr. Kelly, we're not from the FBI. I am Dr. DeVito. You know me. You know me. Dr. Felser is going to take the bad tooth out. He'll show it to you. He'll give it to you so you know you haven't lost it. Okay. Freddie Singh. Ah, uh, silent night, holy night. Sarge on your left, Benny on your right. And this well dentist will fix you up right. So your radio will stop giving advice. You'll sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep like a horse on its feet. Now get him to open his mouth. It's <laughs> crazy. Well, maybe, but I want to try. Well, there's no time. For God's sake, the involuntary's up in 20 days. Then he's out of here. Not if I get him to sign a voluntary, right, Charlie? Right. This is a training hospital, right? And training hospitals will provide psychotherapy patients for their resident psychiatrists. Well, I want Freddie for my training patient. For however long I need to work with him. A week or one year. Lisa, please. I think she's done her homework, Doug. You've got Roger Kelly here on a long-term basis, and a few others. Why not one more? Do you know who Roger Kelly is? He's the brother of the president of the city council, which just happens to write our budget every year. Now, pardon me, but in the eyes of this hospital, who is Freddie Zamora? No one. A person. <laughs> With no money, no clout, but he is alive and treatable. And if I can convince him to stay... Come on, then. Lisa, I've been with you since you came here. And all the way on this case. But do you realize what you're asking? Now, first of all, we've got to get by the director of training. Then, because it's medically unusual, we have to face all the experts on the kitchen cabinet. Then, most fun of all, because Freddie is on Medicaid, we get to do battle with the review committee. Think about it. I have thought about it. Think about the recommendations you'll want when you leave here. I have thought about it. And I'm thinking about this hospital. What if Freddie gets out now and does something out there? <sighs> All right. All right, then just about Freddie. 
We all know that we spend most of our time here with people we can't really help. But then along comes somebody like Freddy, who could really have a life, who could really contribute to the lives of others. Now, he is standing at the crossroads. One way, he ends up a zombie like the men here, and the other way, we help him to a full, productive life. Don't we have some responsibility to him? He'll never agree to it. But if he does, okay. You always known how to read my mind? What can you do in 20 days? Damned if I know, but I better get going. I thought we'd have a drink and to work. What's it to you, huh? What does you care? You speak from here every night, you go dancing, I mean, you do things. And what? You walk out. And what? What do I do, Freddy? You leave me here. Like who, Sonia? Like no one. Like you. I'm your little plaything, your little hobby till you get out of here. Oh, I see. I pretend to care for you, and then I leave. Like everyone else. Everyone who? <laughs> who? Who, who, who? You're an owl! Get off my case. No! Stop bugging me. I can't, Freddy. I'm gambling, and time is running out. You have to talk to me. Let things out. Why? So that you'll touch the hurt and know that it's there. So that you'll stay so we can clean it out. Let it out. You. At one time, me and my aunt, we. Why not, man? I was 14. Her husband had gone. Her sister just died. She loves her nephew. <laughs> he was crying. She was crying. takes him in her bed, you know. No one else knows. They, they like comfort each other. This happens a few times, so she just like wakes up and decides it's wrong. Or does she put a stop to it? I just paying all this attention to Ronnie. It's to make life complete. She starts icing the very nephew she was loving. You. Yeah. Now you wanted to know. And now you know. Now you don't ask me anything else. Because if you do, I got moves of my own. I know where you live. 110 Cobble Street, right? You let me be, man.
with me. Why? You'll work hard, get better, and then what? Nothing. You came here from Puerto Rico to do better, and you did. Terrific grades, prizes, and then what? Nothing. No? Why did you knock yourself out of school? For who? Not Sonia. For no one. For who? For me. Oh, you did it to please yourself. And all the letters that you wrote talking about how great you were doing were for you? Stop it. Who was it for? My father. For him? The one who put his cow in your bed? The one who you said never cared for you? You did it for him? Talk, Freddy. Who was it for? Leave me alone! I excuse me, but this is the only place we can find to work, so if you please just do your business and leave. No, no. We're working. Let it out. Open your heart and let it all come out, Frederico. Never wanted to come here. I wanted to stay with her. Why did she send me away? She was sick. I don't care. I wanted to stay with her. Did you tell her so? Yes. No, she should have known. But you were such a good boy, you went quietly. She wanted you to do well, and you did. I killed myself to be good. To bring it all back to her. Sure. Look, Mama, look what I did. For eight years. And in return, what did she do? She died. She died. Yes. She died. Threw you away. Do you think that she planned it? got you to do all that for her and then died on you on purpose? Planned to die? That's so stupid. Nobody plans to die. Really? She didn't doubt me. No. It's so sad. Listen, thank you. I appreciate what you did for me. Thank you. Fred. It's not over. What? There's still a lot more work. On what? On why you feel helpless so often. On what you describe as living in a police station where everyone is a cop except you. All the stuff that leads to your rages. I thought this was it. That's why I'm asking you to stay on. I don't know. Think about it.
Steve. Listen, what's wrong? Frankly, us. Why? What? I keep telling myself it's Freddy, but it's more. It's you. There are certain things we agreed on, the way our life was going to be. Us together, then us and our kids, and then and only then our patients. That got all turned around. No. I love you. And why does Freddy come first? He doesn't. You said you were going to back off his case. You didn't. Instead, you started more serious treatment. Nobody asked you to. It wasn't required for your residency. You did it. And I went along with it because, quite frankly, when you tell me that a life is at stake, I don't want to be the kind of racist creep that says, what, a Freddy Zamora, a walking ghetto blaster? And as I say it now, I hate myself. And to add pettiness to my sins, there is another life at stake here, too. Mine. And I ain't getting a fair shake. What do you want me to do? My final shameful request. Drop Freddy. Your 30 days are up tomorrow. How do you feel about it? Good. Did nothing happen. Just worried about what to do. I'm scared of going out there. Halfway house, getting a job. All of it. But staying here. Working with you. I don't know. I'm scared of what might come out. Could it be worse than losing yourself in one of your explosions? I don't know. What if it's more than a year and then you're gone? Then what do I do? I won't desert you. You say that now. No. I mean it. Yeah. Your boyfriend is going to let you? I'll handle my own action. <laughs> See, I already taught you something. You have to handle yours. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why are you doing this for me? Because I'm a doctor and you're my patient. No. Because you are a very important person. I don't know about that. I want you to know that whatever you decide, I will still be here for you. Sure, I saw that. <laughs> You're mad. Here they come, Freddy. It's your big day. You gonna stay with this kid or go? Morning, fellas. Morning, Fred. Morning. How you doing? I'm fine. I see it's been 30 days since your last uh, incident. Tell us, uh, how do you feel about all that? I mean, about your problem. Well, uh, Dr. DeVito and me have been working on it, and it's coming along. We still have a long way to go, but... I mean, either here or in outpatient. Uh-huh. Well, uh, tell us. How do you feel about leaving? 
I've, uh, I've thought a lot about that. Go, Freddy. And, uh, go. Get out of this place. All right, fellas, please. Let's let Fred speak for himself. Go on about your business now. Dr. Butler, maybe Freddy would like to discuss this over there. Oh, that's a good idea. Come on, Fred. Dr. DeVito and I understand that this has to be totally your decision. You're not here to please us, only to do what you think's best for yourself. I, uh... I gotta get out of here. I gotta leave. choice. He felt pressure. Lisa. The fact that the other patients were there, I'm sure. Lisa, face it. He wants to go. Let him. What if I won't? Please, do you want me to give the case to Parley? He'll do it. What if he hurt someone out there? We've never had a patient do that. Now, we all lose patients. He wants out. Let him go. It's all about. You want to treat him, he wants to go. The hospital yeah. wants him to go because they need his damn bed. Do you go with that? That is none of my business. I am here for his right. But even if it kills him? It's getting to you, huh, kiddo? Where's that old professional detachment? here to have this wonderful creative experience and then fly off to the good life with all the rich neurotics. And then along came Freddy. Now I don't know what I want. Very handsome. See you next Tuesday. You bet. What time? 10. This is it. No booze, no woman, no drugs except what you bring from the hospital. Mr. Krause, that's my husband. He's always checking up. You know what that means, young man. Hey, 
Frederick Zamona? Zamora. Yes. You haven't finished high school. No, but I plan to. What kind of skills do you have? I draw pretty good. I haven't anything for you. I just want a job. I'll put you on the list. Any job, it, it doesn't have to be good. Uh huh. Excuse me. It, this is Dr. DeVito from up on four. I'm checking into a patient of mine, Frederick Zamora. He was scheduled for today. Has he called or anything? Ah, thank you. I'm on my way to the cafeteria. I missed you last week. I had appointments. Job appointments. How's it going? Fine. And your medication you're taking? Twice a day. Are you sure you don't want to join me? You know, the cafeteria is still serving its morning special, rock hard Danish. <laughs> it's a good idea. Precisely. It's hard to talk here. People are so bad, man. They don't care. All they do is bug you. Ready? Do you want to come back in? Readmit yourself? Listen, I don't take crap. I'm gonna make it. Okay. Hey, I don't take crap. Ready? It's really happening, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it. Well, talk to Butler. The kid misses two sessions, shows up, talks violent, and splits. Maybe Butler will bring him back. No, he can't. I've already tried. He'd have to get a court order, which means Freddie would have to do something. True. Which is the insane joke of it, because that's exactly what Freddie's going to do. No, it's like watching a bomb drop. All you can do is watch. Mrs. Krauss. This is Dr. DeVito again. I'm sorry to bother you, but has Fred Zamora come home yet? What? <sighs> Mr. Kraus. At work? Where? Well, yeah. Do you know where on Thomas Avenue? Just somewhere down there. All right, thanks. What are you doing? I'm going over there. At this time of night? Are you crazy? You're going to that part of town at this time of night alone? For what? Uh, I've got to try and find him. I know where his head is right now, and it's bad. And what are you going to do about it? I don't know. Uh, talk to him, try to calm him down. You realize that this is certifiably nuts, don't you? 
Talk to him about what? Try to do what? I don't know. Try to do what? I don't know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not gonna let you go. Steve, please, I just, I have this feeling if he hurt himself or he hurt someone else... He wouldn't be able to stop it. What, what are you going to do? Are you going to be with him? Are you going to stay with him every second? Lisa, this is crazy. Maybe, but I at least have to try... This is the most unprofessional behavior I've ever seen. Look at you. You're running after a patient in the middle of the night. Why? Because it's after office hours? What, do we stop being doctors after 5 o'clock? I'm not going to go. And if you go, I won't be here when you get back. We could end it right now, Lisa. Or we could go back to what we had before, Freddy. Erase him from my mind? Steve, come on. Lisa, look at what you're doing. Look at yourself. You've got this guilty little rich girl syndrome. You're trying to wash yourself clean through Freddy. Do you really believe look that? Look at you. No! No, listen to you, digging up that old canard. Because it's true. Lisa, can't you turn into something else, some kind of true believer? You're trying to cure the world, Lisa. My parents couldn't do it, and neither can you. No, I'm trying to help a boy in trouble, to be a caring doctor. If that's curing the world, then yes, I am. I guess I have changed. I guess something happened on the way to California. Charlie, it's happened. What? 
that he killed a man. He ran away after. What should I do? What about Freddy? I'm worried about him. Forget Freddy. You're in trouble. What? Why? You signed his release. You let him out. On Butler's orders? Lisa, wake up. This is way beyond Butler. This is the hospital. You think they're going to take the fall for this? They're going to hide, and there you are, so far out on a limb that we can't see you. Job on the line for you? Steve's gone. He left me. I'm sorry. Sometimes you get your best answers that way. Okay, doctor, my client would like to know exactly what's going on here. She, she's not your client, Charlie. You work for the state. I quit. You're ducking her. Why? We're conducting an investigation. Have you investigated yourself? Dr. Butler, you ordered me to release Freddie. No. I urged you to accept the fact that he wanted to go, which you did. You took responsibility. What, are you going to blame me? No, I'm going to try and protect you as much as I can. You should have taken the fall yourself. Now, don't be insulting, Charlie. It doesn't help here. I mean, you don't think I feel bad? You don't think I feel responsible? But I'm the war chief. For God's sake, I represent the hospital. Whose name would be sullied if you took the blame? Whose ability to continue helping patients would be impaired? You're going to throw her to the dogs? Like you did, Freddy. He's a police matter now. He is still my patient. Would you, for God's sakes, get off, Freddy? We're fighting for your job here. No. Because Freddie and I are the same. We are taking the blame that you go to this hospital, and you know it. You're covering up. If you try it, I'll call a press conference and have her tell her side. Carly, I've got to talk to you. No, you don't. Please, just for a minute. I've nothing to say. Polly, Butler was going to have you sign Freddie out if I didn't, and you'd be on the spot. Mm -hmm. This is your game. You asked for it, you play it out. <laughs> we know all about this, what they're trying to do to me. Okay, the hell with me. What about Freddie? And all the other Freddies that are going to come through here, are they going to get the same rotten deal that he got? Because if someone doesn't put a stop to it, they will. And they're going to go right back out on the streets again. How many deaths can you handle, Stoddard? You say you care for these men. Well, do you care for the Freddies, too? Or the ones that they'll kill? Now, you know that I wanted to keep him here. All you have to do is say so. What is it? It's your suspension. Pending an investigation. I'm sorry, I really thought we could do some good. I, uh, I loved your idealism. It made me young again. But, uh, after 20 years in this place, I guess I, I am this place. I, uh... I, I understand. I'm so sorry.
I was in the neighborhood, which is line number one, and I thought we might discuss your case. Line number two. How about I wanted to see you? Oh, the truth. Well... Do you want a drink? Oh, oh thanks. Someday, huh? Yeah. Did you really quit your job? Yeah. Because of me? You, Freddie, me. I, it was a good job. I was really doing things for people. And with Freddie, turned on me. I don't know how. Suddenly, doing the right thing for him had this terrible outcome. I don't blame the job or patients' rights or any of that. But it locked me up. I couldn't see what was really happening. And then it's death. I had to get free. I had to do something. For me. So. Now what are you gonna do? I don't know. Fight this thing. Then what? Going to private practice, I guess. You? The way you dress? Samora, Mr. Samora had not been violent during his stay here, and his psychiatrist felt he could be released. What is that doctor's name? I can't answer that pending an investigation. Isn't it, in fact, the second-year resident, Dr. Lisa DeVito? No comment. Why no comment? Well, that's all I can say for right now. But, uh, no, look, I, I, I've given you all the information I can. I'm sorry, but that's just about all I can I can answer this time. He's going to stiff me. What's the matter? Don't people tip where you come from? Hospital psychiatric care. Is it a case of negligence on the part of the psychiatrist, Dr. Lisa DeVito, who signed some more in the mock war, or an open... Oh, 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 oh. I've been so worried about you. I've been everywhere looking for you. You and everyone else. Are you okay? Yeah. And you? Yeah. It all went bad, huh? Now they're getting you, too. Heard. Yeah. Bad people. Frightened. You were right. I should have stayed. We could have gotten there. I just couldn't wait. 
you trust it. Well, maybe it's not too late. I killed the guy. I know. Freddy. I, um... I spoke to the police. A very nice man. Detective Garcia. Now, he said if I called, he would come down and help you turn yourself in. He said he would protect you. It will all be very quiet and very safe for you. You want to call the cops? Freddy, I have to. Crap! Where's your money? It won't help you. It'll get me out of town. Freddy, it's no good. Wherever you go, they'll find you. No, they won't. Freddy, no! There's the Mora case. He was here. Back street. No, no, he's gone, but he can't have gone too far. The number? I, I can't take it. I know. I know it's over. You do keep mentioning his violence, but there's only one reference to the attack. How come? I put it all down in the record. I didn't think I had to put it down again in my notes. What, not even to cover yourself? Charlie, that was the good old days. I thought like a doctor then, not a lawyer. Still, there's usable stuff here. For what? Your opinion in the investigation. No. Oh, I can't. I just don't have anything left. So they win. So what? Maybe Steve was right. Let them have the world. Whatever they make of it, they deserve. Don't turn that moral silence on me now. Come here. It beat me, Charlie. Plain and simple. The system beat me dead. Maybe. Oh, haven't you ever been beaten? Sure, lots of times. What did you do? You go back in. You're a fighter, I'm not. I don't know what I am. It's all right. You rest. Yes. She can't come to the phone right now. That? It's Detective Garcia. They got Freddie cornered in a barbershop downtown. 
in Granger Street. He's taking a hostage. Did Freddy ask for me? No, Garcia did. You don't owe Freddy a damn thing. I need your help. Can I talk to you? Uh, <clears throat> Freddy? Can you hear me? It's Dr. DeVito. Are you all right? What do you want? To talk. Can we talk? No. Go away. Fred, I'm not angry. I understand what you're going through. Can I come in there and talk to you? I can't let you go in there. He won't talk to me like this. I, I can't use this thing. Can I come over there? Freddy? All right, but not too close. Can I bring Charlie? No, just you. No, forget it. No, don't forget it. Now, it's me or the guns. And if it's the guns, the barber could get hurt. Can I bring you anything? Yeah. What? A tank. Besides that, anything. A jelly donut. And coffee. Okay. Are you sure you're up to this? We'll find out. To be perfectly candid, I think you're crazy. But it's your play. I'm with you all the way. All right, here you go. She's coming in, Fred. Good luck. All right. Give it to him. Take out the stuff. Take a bite. the coffee. I'm Dr. DeVito. And your name, sir? Saruti Dominic. Nice to meet you. Now, Fred, you don't want to hurt Mr. Cerruti, do you? Why don't you let him go? <laughs> let him go and take me. You know that I want to see you get out of this safe. I'll do anything you say. They're less likely to shoot a woman anyway. Besides, it's a fair trade. One Italian for another. All right, come over here. Close. Turn around.
You drink it. He's coming out, the other guy. Think about how many more of those you could have. We walk out to the street. Garcia meets us halfway. You give him the knife. And he and I help you get into the car safe. No. We're walking out there, all right? But we're jumping in one of those cop cars and you're driving me out of here. And then what? We drive. With them behind you? With their guns? The best you get that way is dead. Yeah. In your way, I end up back at that zoo. Or worse, end up in jail. Dead men can't eat donuts. of others. We'll find a way. Please stay alive. You're still betting on me, huh? Absolutely. with your bets lately. All right, we're coming out. It's all right. Don't do anything. Just let us come out. Turn off those lights. Turn off the lights. Get ready. Mark, maintain your position. Well, well, well. Look who's here, my keeper. Come on, Freddy. It's just a little bit further. No. No. I want to say something. You see him? He runs that cycle place down on Broad Street. He lies about her. The hospital wanted to dump me. She was the only one there who wanted to keep me, to treat me. And I want everyone to know that. Because I'm not going back there. Let's do it. 